Hello, my name is Rick Anderson. Uh, I'm a tutor. Uh, and I teach in maths uh, and the sciences, the three sciences, biology, physics and chemistry, uh, and also business studies. Um, I've been tutoring for seven or eight years now, and I've done well over 5,000 hours of uh, tutoring with many, many uh, successes. Um, I started uh, my academic career at Royal Grammar School, Newcastle Royal Grammar School, uh, where I did maths, physics, chemistry, A-levels, got perfect results in A-levels, and was fortunate enough to qualify for Cambridge University uh, or in natural sciences. And uh, as many of you know, um, you do several sciences in the first couple of years. And I did maths, physics, chemistry, biology before focusing really on chemistry in the last year, um, mainly around quantum uh, theory. And my chemistry enabled me to get a job, my first job in uh, British Petroleum. And I worked for many, many years with British Petroleum, Petroleum principally in the chemicals um, wing of it. And um, during that time, I worked in many management roles, IT, um, finance, uh, operations, production, HR. Uh, IT was probably my uh, major role at the end. And with that, I went to work for a company called Sea Containers as well. And during that time, um, I developed dashboards, um, initially from PowerPoint spreadsheets and so forth, but eventually with proper database uh, systems and um, you know interactive uh, graphics with uh, very modern systems. Became very well known for that. I was invited to enter to the Harvard University Hall of Scale, uh, Balance Scorecard Hall of, Hall of Fame. Um, I became quite an expert on the, the early Balance Scorecard. I was one of the first to introduce Balance Scorecard for a major uh, company. And all of that um, helped me as to develop an interest in uh, data, uh, big data, for instance, an application of data um, in business decisions. I've worked with universities quite a lot to um, look at, you know, how data can be used to make better business decisions for, you know, in finance, present financial trends, and variances, and so forth. And I trained uh, people all around the world in Asia, America, and Europe um, in these dashboards. And um, having got into training, um, sometimes with hundreds of people, I began to train and teach my own children um, in GCSEs, particularly maths and science, and that sort of morphed eventually into full-time uh, tutoring. And uh, as I said, I've been doing that for seven or eight years now, full-time tutoring. And I work with pupils from age of about 11 up to about 18. Um, my central age is probably, you know, 14 to 16 for GCSE, but I also do A-level and also um, entry into Oxbridge, where I um, teach uh, the exam, the natural sciences, particularly entrance exam. Um, and I look at the sort of questions that could be asked and uh, do little individual sessions on each particular topic, like, for instance, probability. Um, and I've had several successes and also with interviews as well. And uh, I look at the personal statements, advise. Uh, pupils and their parents on personal statements and there's been uh, they get more and more fantastic aren't they and I look at them uh, and I think gosh I wish I'd done that sort of thing at uh, 17 years old um, fantastic and I try and inspire confidence that they're, they're great candidates and just going back to the way I teach um, whether it's GCC or A-level I look at um, particular topics that uh, the pupils are doing at school um, as I say, teach the test. Um, I think that every level test is important. Um, and I find out what they're doing and I help them prepare for that test. And if the, the little tests work and they get good, result, good results, that generally leads to better major qualifications as well. Um, I do a bit of theory with them, a bit of uh, a few examples on screen, uh, and they help me get the answers. And then I set homework and we go through that. Um, towards the beginning of the next lesson. And I'll just show you a very quick, typical example. I'll go through it very quickly. Let's say uh, probability. Um, if I look at uh, a typical um, uh, slide pack I've prepared, I've prepared these myself, as you can see, and I've got uh, eight, 80 of these, 80 for Maths GCSE. Uh, and they're, you know, highly sort of interactive. You go through, these are all of the slide packs are prepared for all the syllabus or the syllabus inside out. Sometimes have a bit of fun with you know, films and so forth. 
summary and through the detail. And uh, I'll often you know, prepare, you know, quite nice uh, diagrams and so forth, probably the tree, more difficult one, the golden rules, and then typical questions, typical questions there. And then through to some detail maybe of the question. Um, I set the question for a pupil, yeah, what's the probability of, of taking three heads, three tails, and three throws, gradually reveal the answer and invite them to you know, tell me what's coming next. Another one might be, you know, a little bit more complicated, snooker balls, whatever, another tree, take them through the diagram, take them through the uh, steps. I'm very keen on them writing their own steps to make sure they, for instance, get the method marks in their exams, gradually review the steps until we get to the answers. And if we look at um, a follow on from that, um, I look at uh, maybe uh, another, uh, another type of um, thing that I would share with you like this. And this would be uh, one of many, many quizzes I've created myself, my IT skills, interactive quizzes, hundreds of questions, thousands of questions actually. And this might be A level um, biology. Uh, with yeah, how can maths, how can you do maths questions in A level biology? And this is a probability, you know, following on from the problem that we've just done. Uh, this might be um, a quiz on um, Hardy Weinberg and uh, probability, and I created all this myself. And we'll end up with a probability question. And the question might relate to, you know, what is the probability of getting a particular uh, genotype? And so if we get a right answer, we get a correct. And then another so follow up question. If we get a wrong answer, we get, you know, try again until eventually get the right answer. And so, you know, that would be um, a typical sort of uh, lesson. Then we follow that through with questions from past papers. So, um, you know, in terms of um, putting it all together, then how do I uh, inspire confidence? Well, I like to. Get pupils to understand, go through the steps, make sure they recognize the technique. They should never be surprised um, at questions that are coming up because it's my job to you know, tell them what sort of questions are coming up so that when they go into real tests, real, real exams, they know what's coming and they've done the question before. Um, and I you know, delight in them getting good results. Um, in terms of the sort of thing I've done, uh, as I say, GCSE, A level, Oxbridge, all sorts really. Um, if you look at uh, specialities, I do. Um, I've mentioned uh, GMAT and uh, UK Maths Challenge. Uh, UK Maths Challenge is a really good one for pupils to do. Um, it runs from junior, intermediate, all the way up to uh, senior, um, and it's very difficult maths problems. But uh, some pupils are really up for the challenge and I help them get through that. So, you know, focus on maths, GCSE, but all sorts of specialities, including um, entrance into Oxford. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening.